What's up, guys? Thank you for tuning into the Prototype Podcast. I am your host, Infinite Prototype. Today's episode is really awesome. I've got my friend Stephanie McGovern. She's a mixed media and performance artist based in New York. And we had a really great conversation today. Just talk about being an artist, the struggle, trying to find opportunities, trying to make your own opportunities, and really just had a great conversation between the two of us. So I'm not gonna harp on it too much. And let's just get into the episode. What's up, Steph? Oh, uh, not a lot. I wore my <laughs> Sunday best for you, which is studio clothes. Yeah, and I'm in my my cozy pajamas. Yeah. Um, that's the vibe. It's it's fall. Yeah, it's fall, and it feels you know to me it feels more like a California fall in a way. Wait, I am I what... recording? Is it? Yeah, you're good. It's doing it. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure. Just try and point like it into it like that. Like this. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's it's the okay. How's the podcast? It's good. We're restarting. We're kicking off. Uh, kicking off better. We're going. Sh- I'm gonna like hopefully be more sustainable and like yeah, put less pressure on myself for it. Mm. Um. Obviously, I've upgraded the video and lighting a little bit since last time we've done it. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think I've found a more sustainable path for myself. Yeah, that's good. You know, how's uh, how's your practice been going? How's my practice been going? Um, I mean, it's like going pretty well. I was like having all these different thoughts about like what we're going to talk about today, and like, you know, because it's take two. I don't remember anything that like we talked about last time. The first time we like talked about um. Just kind of like who you are, like your, like what you do for a living, your experience right. in the art. Like we kind of, it was kind of more of like a generic conversation. Yeah. And I also never released it, so. I know. <laughs> uh, we're referencing something that doesn't even exist technically. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, but I was going to kind of let you take the reins on this one because you hit me up and you seemed like you had a clear, pretty clear idea, like you were feeling mm. it. Yeah, I've been like, I guess, I guess I would like to talk about my trajectory a little bit as like an artist Mm -hmm. but more so like I don't know I've just been thinking about longevity of being an artist and the trajectory of like trying to like create an art career of some kind because I graduated from my MFA within like the last year and a half I think we talked like just before or just after you had finished your MFA just after Mm -hmm. and I think that like my mind was like scrambled still from that experience but i've just been thinking so much about just like the longevity of like an art career or like how do you create an art career how do you set your path as like an artist or creative and Mm -hmm. especially someone who has to like work for a living too like most people like most people (laughs) yeah um i had a mentor i worked um so for reference, I, I went to grad school in New York, went to the school of visual arts and I was working full time uh-huh. while I was in the program. And I remember like talking to a mentor I had outside of school and she said to me like, well, you have to work. So yeah. is there going to be something at some point where you quit your job for a certain opportunity? Like, is it school? Mm-hmm. Is it a residency? Is it? A certain show or is it like going somewhere to make art and she's like or do you find a way to make your practice work no matter what you're doing and where you're at and like accepting huh. that you have to work that's tough <laughs> yeah that's i just i struggled with that so much because mm-hmm. i kept telling myself like okay i'm just gonna have a job and then when i get a residency opportunity i'm just gonna quit and go and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> and that was fine when i was living like at my mom's place and mm-hmm. working a job and like didn't have rent or like you know that was like an option for me mm-hmm. but now i'm like i have my own apartment my parents like don't live near me i don't have like i can't just like be in the location that i want and then also not like have the responsibility of like sustaining myself right yeah I mean, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's interesting. like going, you know, to a program that essentially is like professional practice, Mm -hmm. you know, it's setting you up for like a longevity of some kind of career. Like I would think that's just, that's how grad school is or how it's designed. Um, And going to an arts program, like 
there's no there's no real like path after that it really is like you're kind of like determining it and like setting it in a sense so it's kind of interesting to like see as like the years start to like roll by and like setting different goals as an artist like okay this year I'm going to focus on a residency and Uh you know next year I'm going to focus on you know trying to get a couple of shows or trying to show in a different country or something like that and so you know um I came from originally I'm from the Bay Area and I kind of like see this trajectory of like the last like 13 years because it's like 21 Uh I left my my like family home and like went to school and studied studio art in San Francisco and since then it's like a series of actions of you know trying to get into a position where I can just like be an artist and like those are really more like moments Mm -hmm. and like fleeting so it's like oh some studio time or it's like oh I get to go away to make art for two weeks somewhere and or I get to go to grad school so it's like it's almost like trying to like steal time away to be an artist. Yeah, steal time from like your reality to like go live the go live I the guess. moment. Like or try and like develop this like it's weird, right? Because it's like trying to develop two career paths at once, right? Like, yeah. Because you have like the job that sustains you and like it doesn't make sense to not try and like make that work like in the long run. And then like you also want to make your art career make those advancements as well and then like try and sustain that it's like you're mm. you're doing two like full-time career paths at the same time yeah and certain things definitely mm-hmm. like fall to the wayside <laughs> like like being a person i think yeah. a lot of the time or like doing the things that you know you would normally do on a weekend which is maybe relaxing and instead you know <laughs> what can i do to like contribute to my like artist practice yeah it's literally like consumes you 24 7 it's yeah it's tough that's how that's how i got like burned out last year and just quit everything Mm -hmm. because i was just like unable to do it and then also trying to like sustain relationships and friendships on top of that makes it fucking so difficult and yeah i just don't i just don't have any friends and (laughs) (laughs) we're friends we're friends no i have friends but i don't i don't see people very often Mm -hmm. because i i literally am working like all the time or i'm kind of like resting and trying to recuperate Mm -hmm. because you spend so much mental energy yeah day to day yeah and i actually think that um school something about the combination of covid plus a graduate program plus a full-time job was like way too much at once <laughs> you don't and say like, yeah and i just uh it's like this recovery is like taking forever but at the same time it's like these massive like shifts so i'm like well maybe yeah. it's just that things are just different now too yeah, but you're fried like, yeah and you're also tr- you're like you're fried like at being coming out of school like is exhausting mm. like and it's such a big shift from like having all that structure and having this like academic world isn't real like it doesn't exist outside of academia uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah it's true i guess <laughs> like it's 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 tough right because you want to like try and find that same feeling but it's mm-hmm. like it doesn't doesn't exist again yeah it depends on the program you go to as mm-hmm. well so like you know, studio, I think that like what I try to find is like art community Mm -hmm. and just like having, just having communal space that you can go to and like be around other artists and be creating. And like, I, anytime I see like my peers around and like if we go to shows and we're just start talking about this, that, you know, especially in New York city, it's, you know, I mean, right now, especially like, you know, the market for studios is like outrageous. Crazy. Like I was just looking a year ago and it's like already even more expensive. Um, And so it's like, all right, well, I'll just continue to make in a more like isolated environment, like in my own home. Yeah. You get more like bang for your buck out of like your personal space than you will like out of a fucking shoebox in Greenpoint for... (laughs) however much money they want to charge for it at this point yeah it's it's like it's sad um but it's more just like trying to like have the community more than anything like where can you go and at least like be around other artists like kind of like consistently Mm -hmm. instead of these sort of like feels like there's more of these like fleeting moments in like social spaces where 
I run into like my peers and then we're talking about art again. And, Uh um, cause to me, like that was like the one thing in that experience that felt like worthwhile was just like being around other artists and talking about art and creating. Yeah. I think like physical community space is so hard to come by right now. Yeah. I know. Like, Like, because it doesn't make money. Like for the most part, like yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't translate well to like a business. And like when storefronts cost like $5,000 a month minimum, like mm-hmm. you're fucked. Like yeah. it's, it's really tough. So, well, so I'm thinking like, well, so it's how, like if you're just, you know, an object based artist mm-hmm. and like, you're just in the making and in a studio space, it's like how, like, how can you keep your career going as an artist with so many like there's so many opportunities in new york but there's so many artists Uh and so it can feel pretty impossible to get (laughs) like an opportunity there's so many barriers for those opportunities too whether it's like financial or like time sure yeah or like you feel like you have to be um out and about and like spending time with certain people Mm. or like you feel like you have to like spend money and like go to certain places and Mm -hmm. i i don't know how people manage to do it at this point yeah i don't i don't think like the cost on the artists ever really goes away like even looking at like historically just you know artists that have made like masterpieces and were like living in poverty the whole time and then their works go into like an auction house like how many like centuries later and and they're selling for like millions of dollars like there's just always this I don't know. There's always this like cost with art and like trying to like be an artist and it's definitely always falling on like the person who's doing the making so much of the time. Yeah. And I don't fuck with that. I don't subscribe to that anymore. So like, like, how can you, how can you keep going then? You know, I feel like you always have to like pay for something (laughs) to like be making. I mean, I think art materials outside of like, painting and sculpture are Mm -hmm. like pretty cheap and accessible right like video and photo it's tied into everyone's phone now at this Mm -hmm. point like that's accessible um collage is like the most accessible form of art like there's printed material everywhere i mean like access so like in a space like new york Uh where it's like you want to like show your work oh well you're (laughs) fucked like (laughs) like you can always make things but there's a cost for yeah for physically showing your work which is like what most people want to do like they want the show aspect like Mm. there's there's nothing that's just like i mean i don't want to say nothing right because i was literally talking to my friends who run an art collective and they're trying to change the model Mm -hmm. they're trying to like move away from pay to play for artists they're they have a really good hookup with a gallery in Hell's Kitchen that like in between shows lets them put on pop-ups like mm-hmm. so they're trying to do stuff like that. I think there's a lot of effort like on that front. Yeah, I love that about New York that there's a lot of artist initiatives to try to like, you know, you're not given an opportunity so you go create your own mm-hmm. opportunity. Yeah, and outside of that, I mean like showing your work online is the only other most more accessible way. Yeah. Um and i think there's more opportunity now as an artist to like show your work get your work in front of more eyeballs right Mm. and if you're able to get your work in front of eyeballs online if you're able to build a community that way you can set up models for sustaining yourself through those communities they're, they yeah. exist like i i'm see artists do it i'm trying to get them on so have them talk about it mm-hmm. um but outside of that, like if you're if you're so like dead set on wanting like physical shows, like good luck. I mean, yeah, I guess luck. Is, but you know, I don't know. So I just think about the kind of like endurance race of mm-hmm. like being an artist, because then it's like if you're just you know if it's just to show work online and to just have an online presence, then what's even like the point of being in New York City at all? Like you don't need to be. Yeah. I mean, I think it might depend on what you're looking for as like an artist, you know? So here it's like, you know, for example, I, you know, I was, I did all my schooling in San Francisco and I stayed there Mm -hmm. for like, I was in, I was in SF for like five years total. And so 
I did my undergrad and then I was making art in the studio in my old um, department. So they let me use the studio space there and it was like really nice facilities. And I just kind of like worked out of there as an alumni. Uh And so I would just like bartend, (laughs) like bartend a few times a week. And then I was like making art and, you know, even there it was really hard to like, a leaf fell off my plant. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is yeah, that, no, no, um, here? no, it's, uh, this apartment is a little haunted. Is it really? I don't think so, but mm. it makes noises. You know, it's an old apartment. Yeah. I mean, I think in New York, you're going to get something mm-hmm. like if it's not a ghost, it, it's like something else. It's like you have rats or, you know, <laughs> Don't start, please. <laughs> it's fine. Like, I thought, Don't yeah, I thought that. for a while I had a ghost in my apartment. Don't do that to I, me. <laughs> I have a, uh, I have spiders in my apartment, and um, I had like the exact opposite analogy, which was just like, if it's not that, it would have been a ghost. And I'm like, that's that's true, you know. <laughs> you know, no, but I think that you know, so living back in san francisco making art i'm like i had this great i had like a pretty nice practice going on but like i had no community i had no artist around me um and i decided that i wanted to move to new york city Mm -hmm. like just to move to new york and to kind of like i had this like abstract idea of like someday i'll go to grad school but i didn't really think that would happen because i had this like idea that grad school was like it felt like really unattainable in ways like, oh, you have to be very smart to go to grad school. And I was no, like, you don't. I was like, I'm not smart enough for grad school or like whatever that means. The director um, of my ex's grad program is like a private grad school in Boston. He tried to, he offered me a full ride like three times. <laughs> and I was, yeah, I was like, what? No. why? Why didn't you do it? Fuck that. I didn't need, I didn't let, <sighs> I didn't need that. Like, I was like, not about the program. I was like, n- I hate Boston, first of all. If oh. you live in Boston, like, sorry but fuck you um oh my god (laughs) is it the cold or is it no it's the city it's Mm. the people it's the infrastructure Uh it's the vibe it's um everything that makes boston boston i think is the worst thing about that place in this country okay i've never been to boston so don't go to boston ever (laughs) hopefully no one from boston listens to your podcast (laughs) don't care if they do or don't okay that yeah Fuck you, Boston. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. You can edit that clip with your face. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but um, no, I'm very anti-grad school, like, across the board. I think it's, I think it's borderline the same experience as, like, an undergraduate studio degree. I don't agree with that. It's totally different. <laughs> Let's, let's get into it i mean like well i didn't do like a fine art program though oh i, I did yeah okay but i've seen i've seen like though i like visited them and mm-hmm. like i do think that there's like a different quality of work that's produced in like an mfa versus a bfa at least what i've seen from visiting i think it all depends on the individual student because sure like and the I program s- too the program honestly is like can be whatever like um, because the pro the main difference between programs is going to be like the instructors and the facilities available to you. Right. Sure. Like, yeah. Um, everything else is really like self-determination in terms of an art degree. Mm, yeah. Right. I, sometimes. Yeah. Like 90% of it is like, if your instructors are good or like, if you have instructors from diverse mediums, diverse backgrounds, like you'll get different opinions, which is important. And you'll get different um, workshops and technical skills, which is also important. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is like the studio facilities that are available to you. And then it's up to you to figure out how to use it or if you want to use it or if you don't want to use it. And then like students that fucking don't try and don't do anything make shit work. And students that do try and like really use everything available to them uh, oftentimes end up making really good work. And so like that's why I think like I saw like really great quality work coming out of undergraduate students in multiple Uh, fields and then i saw grad students who made like bullshit piles of dirt in the middle of galleries like yeah i mean if you don't want to you know uh learn anything like obviously it depends on like the individual Mm -hmm. but 
I guess I guess I think and I guess they, I think it dep- depends on like the stakes that are at hand for sure. that person. And I think if maybe in an MFA program, you might have more mature students. So the stakes are different for them. Like, mm-hmm. I, I guess it's just there's more of an emphasis of sort of like, you know, you really are kind of entering into like it's just like more of a commitment i guess like if you're choosing to do an mfa yeah i yeah. agree and i think that relates back to like the self-determination thing that i was talking about mm. like you know if you go like because th- there's people who go to grad school and get mfa straight after undergrad and they're like in their early 20s like they're 21 or you have someone who's like in their th- like early 30s and going to grad school like <laughs> <It's> me <laughs> you can but that's fine like that's good like honestly like you know like a more mature perspective on art is generally like better like Mm. how like just across the board like because you've lived more you've experienced more you like take things a little bit slower than someone who's like maybe in their 20s and wants to do a fucking million million things right like the thoughtfulness might be there Mm. that's someone but again that's like all kind of determined by just you and who you are not the program that you're in yeah um i mean i think that i guess the way i feel about those degrees is um i think it wouldn't be such an issue if they weren't so expensive really is what it is and so i do think that like you know if school is um broken down into just goods and services Mm -hmm. received right like a sort of business um which they're treating it like it is yeah i mean a lot of yeah a lot of institutions like in the u.s and in other um I think in other like Western countries, like in the UK too. Um, But if that's it, then I don't think like, especially from art degrees, like you always get like tangible goods afterward, you know? Um, And that's what I mean about the sort of like creating your own path, Uh especially, you know, it's like, why, why like be so committed to art in a sense? It's like, I think of like this long trajectory that I've had, which is like, I kind of gauges like 13 years now of of when I you know went to like an undergrad of like I'm doing studio art into like an MFA you know um like 10 years later mm-hmm. at, well, probably less but um and just like the longevity of like you know how do you create an art career and like especially like how do you carve how do you carve all this um space out um to be an artist like those moments where you get to be an artist. And like, when I look at that, like 13 year span, I sort of see these, like (laughs) these just, it's more like just like these moments in time of like, okay, I have to like deal with life and like my circumstances, Mm -hmm. but then like, I can find a way to like get back into like art and creativity and more so like how to get my work out there. Cause like, to me, like work doesn't like, I can always sit in a studio I can make anything into a studio and I can just make compulsively till I die because it's like how I kind of like manage life is just like through art making period. Um, but it doesn't really, you know, it's having like the discourse and the conversation around it and getting to like share it that, you know, it gives it this like other kind of like purpose in a way. And it's like, you know, cause otherwise like it's kind of depressing just sitting and only making art and not like, ever doing something with it you know yeah and i don't even mean like selling it like selling is great like i would love to sell my work but like i think now that i'm older i'm looking at kind of an area of my practice that's about like my family and like where i come from and and like my like relationship to like my parents and um you know to extended family members who like came from europe and and thinking about like just like my family history. Steph, I'm so sorry. Turn off my phone. Please. I don't know. I don't know who's texting me. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, there. it's fine. I was hoping that was going to stop. And I was like, who is that? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess just thinking about a lifetime like trajectory of like, why would you like, why, like, what does it mean to choose to pursue an art career? Mm-hmm. Like you're an artist. Maybe you feel like you've you've been born an artist and you've made art your whole life. And so to pursue art as a career, you know, it is like I'm realizing like it's just this lifelong commitment and endurance of like, you know, how to create like a balanced life. Yeah. And then also 
you know, to continue like feeling like you're pushing art as a career. Yeah. My professors always told me it's a marathon, not a dash. Yeah. I'm really impatient. Like, <laughs> so this is like where I feel like, you know, you get, so it's, like, it's like you get all this momentum in school mm-hmm. and like momentum I hadn't seen before. Cause I did a studio art program. Um, and my more technical background is textiles mm-hmm. um, because my professor went to RISD and they have should this I is wait for these fucking noises? crazy. Now my dad's calling me. Yeah. Um, and now there's an ambulance outside. I mean, this is kind of shooting in New York. That's like how <laughs> it's going to go. This shit is parked, isn't it? No, it's moving. You hear it. This is fucking classic. Yeah. My apartment would have been really noisy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right on the corner. Yeah, it's awful. Um <laughs> But like I was saying, you get all this you get all this momentum after school. And I don't know if it's because it's an MFA or if it's like an MFA in Manhattan and there's so mm-hmm. many galleries around and there feels like there's so much energy and like possibility. But you're also at SVA. Like you're yeah. not at fucking no name whatever like random ass college in any other state like sure i mean but i went to school in san francisco and i didn't have um i didn't have like that same energy around like my like graduation or you know i don't feel like there it didn't seem like i i I understood like as a young artist like um the possibilities Mm -hmm. at all like that wasn't really it didn't seem apparent and like that's what became that's what I sort of realized in my graduate program It's sort of like oh like there's so much that you really can do like in the arts in the arts mm-hmm. like not just as like an artist yeah for sure yeah um I had a little bit of a different experience than you just because mm-hmm. like New Paltz was so close to the city and a lot of my professors were like keen on taking us to the city and like have like worked with all that stuff so I I got mm-hmm. a lot of that in my undergrad program which is great like it's really lucky that i didn't have to spend another sixty thousand dollars to like go to grad school and like learn like yeah (sighs) yeah i get that (laughs) i really understand that like i really do um but it's yeah i guess afterwards i'm just thinking so now I'm like, oh, I see all this possibility and like Mm -hmm. all these things I can do and like having some of that momentum and like kind of like using it um, to my advantage to like and and just getting certain opportunities that like I this wasn't even a possibility. It felt like those like 10 odd years ago of Mm -hmm. like my after my undergrad program Um, or even like in the last five, like before grad school and like. I don't know, I guess understanding more about the art world or like just opportunities that exist in it. Um, And now I'm like, you know, I've been thinking of this idea of like the art of rejection in a way. I don't know if that's a book title, but it totally should be. Art of rejection? (laughs) Yeah, kind of. What do you mean by that? There's so much as an artist, I think. I think that we all... have to get rejected by... No, not that you have to, just that um, I think that, you know, all artists experience that, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're trying to pursue your career, that there's a lot of rejection in it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like despite your work or like your CV that um, it just continues. Like I have a list of everything, you know, it's like I'm trying to like, you know, create these year long sort of plans of like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm applying to all these opportunities. I want to have shows Mm -hmm. getting no shows, but then getting a residency. And I'm like, Oh, it's amazing. And then, you know, coming back and I'm like, Oh, I want to go do more of those residencies. (laughs) And then just like getting, you know, rejected from them. And like some (laughs) of them are fine. I'm like, I know I'm not going to get that, but it's more like an exercise to like learn from too. Um, you know, but it's funny when you see like the 20, I've applied to like 25 things and I got yeah. like two of them in like a 12 month period. That's great. That's literally it's not too bad. So, that's better than most people. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess. Um, no, it's literally a game of numbers. It's just like, it's longevity. It's numbers. It's like, 
it's almost like sales, right? Like you can't be mm-hmm. scared of like failing on a sales call, but you like have to just do the next one. It's right? like, it's not even like, um, a scared of failing. It's more just like this impending doom of like my mm-hmm. death. And I want to like, get a lot of, <laughs> You're like, if I, I don't wanna, get this, like, I'm going to fucking die. I'm just die. like, I can't waste my, well, I think it's just that I, you know, I don't want to, you know, I could be back home in like California, like mm-hmm. spending time with my family or like probably having, a, a much more relaxing existence than living in New York. Um, Cause you know, it's like you come here for, for reasons. Like it, it can be hard to live here. It's like, I mean, I'm not from here. So and I've been here for eight years. Yeah. I don't know how to not live here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. California. It's very nice. Like <laughs> it's really nice. It's a, it's a lot more relaxed. So I think um, it's like, I came here for New York and then I'm like seeing all these things about, you know, the possibilities of being an artist and realizing how like, Oh, this is really, this is just my life. Like this is just going to keep going. And, you know, so I'm like, well, what, what am I, what can I take from like this space? You know, cause it's, it's unique to have so many artists in one, one area, um, especially who are all like, there's so many talented artists in New York. Um, lots that went to, um, art school or like have some kind of art education and, um, it's, different i go back home and i don't see that as much like yeah um so yeah i don't know but yeah a lot of a lot of rejection i'm realizing <laughs> like mm-hmm. so much i had this one this is what actually spurred me to text you because i was so mad so i had um i apply i really want to go i did an international residency this last summer in greece and it was awesome mm-hmm. and it was a great experience and i was like i really want to do another one and so I found one. I really want to go to Japan next. Cool. So I found one and I was like, this is perfect. I was like, this is the right time. Like, I love the location. It's in, it's like in the city. Like, I want to have this kind of experience. And I just really thought, I really, I don't, don't ever think I really have anything. I don't, I just kind of like put my, put my cards out and then I kind of move on. And if I get something, it's great. If not, I just keep doing what I'm doing in New York. I mm-hmm. keep practicing. For some reason, I really thought I had it. <laughs> It's just like, nah, they're going to take me. Yeah, and then you, how could this go wrong? I like read the, e- it was so funny. I read the email and I like, I just was like, this is it. And I, I read it and it was like the first, it's like, I read it the weird, I read this first sentence and then I read just like half the paragraph, like this side of the email. Like I didn't, it was so weird. And I realized when I skipped there, it was just like, unfortunately. And I was like, what the (laughs) fuck? No, like I totally thought I had it. And so it was so funny and you know, so much like, I just kind of live my life on, on just the perseverance of like self will of like, I really want something and I'm just going to find a way to do it in some capacity. You know, like I want to go to school. All right. It's going to take me like five years to do it because I have to like do it this certain way. Like it's the only way that's accessible to me. And so like that, I think, is what's so hard about like <laughs> pursuing this weird ephemeral like artist career, like trying to create an artist career is that so much is out of my control. <laughs> all of it almost all of it except for what you god i don't want to believe that literally almost like especially you who want like you're someone who wants like a traditional artist career like i know that's not realistic though like it's like you want to you're someone who's like very much like all right i want to do residencies i want to show my work in person i want to like yeah do that that is like the most out of control for you that you could possibly be as an artist i know I think it's, I mean, I'll make my, (laughs) I'll make my own opportunity. It'll happen. I'm just like, I know the work it takes to do it though, because I've done it before. And I think that, you know, it's more like, all right, I'll just work my job and then kind of like see what I can get based on like the merit of my work, hopefully. Mm -hmm. What do you define as like making your own opportunity? Like, um... I think it looks a lot of different ways. So I think that like, like I was just kind of circle back like space, for example, like mm-hmm. having space in New York is such a like precious thing, such a precious 
precious commodity <laughs> <laughs> like in my mind um you know it's probably why so many people invest in real estate here yeah. <laughs> um, but i think it's really like if you get access to space like and if you have like the perseverance to like you know take advantage of the opportunity mm -hmm. like that's all it is like if you're given an opportunity like how can you like like kind of like soak the most out of it um I think it really is just like getting space and it's like cool i have space like what other artists do i want to bring together to do something here like do mm -hmm. we want to work out of this space and then also show in this space um i think about that but like you know you say yes to one thing you say no to other things so you know and i usually look at everything like that when i'm trying to like meet some kind of goal it's just like oh, if i buy this i say no to something else you know uh -huh. yeah. um and so i think it's like again, this is like what I mean about like choosing these like periods where, okay, I'm not going to be like practicing art, but I'm going to be like investing in, um, this other way that I can participate in the arts or mm -hmm. in the art world and feel like an artist and like be an artist, you know, it's like, it just can't all be happening at once. Yeah. Not when you don't have the money, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, if I had the money, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, there's always all those uh, precious grants that they're just giving out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, I work, I do work, I work full time. So mm. some of those things, it's like, I mean, this is, it's like the whole structure, you know, I think even when you're looking at trying to get money to go to, to your undergrad, for example, it's like, you know, these things are based on, um, in terms of just like finances, mm -hmm. it's like, if you're in the middle like you don't really qualify for like um funding and as i work i'm like it's fine like i can find a way to like pay for something you know i can save my money or i can try to sell things or i don't really know like i'll find a way like um but yeah i don't know i have lots of friends in undergrad who had those stories of like we were just over the line and couldn't get financial aid for school kind of stuff. Yeah, that shit sucks. Yeah, it's such a, yeah, it's Especially not right. Especially for something as like, like a studio art degree where there like is no promise of anything after school. Yeah, that's the issue. <laughs> like at least with like most other degrees, like unless like, you know, outside of like a generic like humanities degree, like most other degrees come with at least like some guarantee like which i think it's what it's just a job market yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's like a job market for there's a it job market. Yeah. um i think like the you know obviously like design is like the most like lucrative art mm. field you can go into right now yeah i mean i've thought about like you know i mean it's funny it's fine to, i have i hold like three degrees actually and In what <laughs> exactly <laughs> just, well i have an aa degree and like it's in general education but okay. that was like that actually i did i split up my undergrad so i did an aa degree first because i just had this philosophy of like i want to spend as little money on a college education as possible just like out of protest because mm -hmm. i just um just didn't I just don't agree with like how how much school is um here like i don't i think everyone should get I think everyone should have an education. I literally didn't understand anything about college until I was there for two years. <laughs> mm. I only went because I had to, and I would have like felt like a loser going to the community college in Long Island. No, I love fuck that. I love community <laughs> college. How dare you? <laughs> no, I mean like I get it. Like community college is sick, but like Long Island community college, like Nassau Community College and like Suffolk Community College is sad. I understand. Like they're not all obviously like every school, every program is not built the same or funded I, the same. I mean like they're actually like not bad, but like I was looking at them and just seeing like the people who go there and oh spend their God. lives on Long Island, and I was like, nope, not me. I'm <laughs> I, I am you, not staying here. Yeah, you want to get out of your town. I understand, <laughs> but I also I hate spending money on anything. Like I just you know I I did the I stayed at home like you know as an adult with my with my parents. Like I had that opportunity to do that, and um my school was paid for because my dad was my, we just didn't, we didn't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. My dad was disabled. And, um, so I had, was given like funding to go to school essentially. Um, so I did my like two, two and a half years there. And then I transferred at, into San Francisco and like, but I learned a lot in that, uh, at that school, like they had a really good math and science department and, 
if I hadn't done art, I probably would have done math or science, <laughs> actually. So what, wait, what are your other degrees in? So you got the, the uh, general education. That one, and then I had, and then I have my undergrad, which is uh, a BA in studio art, and then I have my MFA. Okay. So it's all art. <laughs> I'm not like a scientist. <laughs> I know. Listen, you have to listen. You should be proud of your degrees. They take time. And the reality is that everything can be taken away from you. Almost everything can be taken away from you in life, but they can't take your degrees away. They can. So I don't only even, thing. I don't even know where my piece of paper is. Listen, I'm proud of my papers. <laughs> they can't keep me dry in the rain, but I, like I'm proud of them. I think it's on hidden in that bookshelf somewhere. I have mine. I tried to yeah well, I have mine. I, look I you should be proud of your education it it takes a lot to do well not everyone like does it not everyone has the opportunity to and yeah, that's the thing sure. is that like I actually think to pursue education like even if it's in something like art or like you know that isn't going to necessarily make you money I think that that is incredibly <laughs> it's almost gonna use the word brave that's not the word i was gonna use that's stupid no it's just it takes like that takes energy and effort and commitment mm -hmm. and like you know it's yeah, it's blood, not sweat, and tears yeah but it shouldn't be that way like you should be able to just get educated if you want an education that's you know cute. no but but I know. like that's how it should be but so that's why i think that if you actually pursue it and you obtain it like that's a, it's like a big deal it is there's a lot stacked up for you not to get them for sure especially yeah. here that's like. what i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you know and so i think like you know i worked through all of my school and you know life doesn't stop lifing while you're trying to like get a degree of any kind and so um you just have to you know to kind of like be dealing with all those things that can potentially happen and then still try to like finish and like get an education like you know it's a big deal listen that's that like <laughs> that took me forever to like <laughs> get some degrees or you know do something and now get these degrees i know but i'm like okay like i mean that's a very tangible like goal too mm -hmm. um and so so let's 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 tie this all together let's let's wrap yeah. this up in a neat little bow like what are your what are your goals right now what are you like shooting for like what is like the end of this year and like hmm. the start of next year look like for you i mean i have like just personal financial goals this Tell me year about them, if you feel comfortable doing that <laughs> paying off a credit card uh. <laughs> when i went to art miami fucking last year jesus <laughs> miami's so expensive why i mean so i think i missed the mark on international residencies for next year um so i i'm gonna apply next summer to try to go abroad again mm -hmm. um you know i'll probably look at europe but i'm in and japan it just depends i have some schemes in mind for okay. myself but um next year next year i think i'm gonna just hunker down in new york like and i'm just gonna kind of like save for the 2025 um i've applied to some like residencies here um and i also so i also work in an arts institution and um i work for a department and um but through that i'm able to um kind of like build my own projects uh -huh. in a way so this last year um, I actually worked with like different partnerships in the city and we did like, um, I started working more with like artists and like bringing them in and like kind of like extending opportunities to them. So I'm hoping that I'll have the opportunity to do that next summer, um, through, you know, just hope, hoping, you know, um, <laughs> we applied to a few things. Um, but I think just like being here and like practicing and, and trying to like, you know, get back onto like, maybe I'll try to like get some shows again. Um, you know, might do something more like self-starting and just like put together my own show, mm -hmm. like maybe a group exhibition or just like, you know, I think for me, I just like to see my work realized in space mm -hmm. where I can kind of just bring people and we can just like look at it and like get feedback on it. Um, and I know there's something else in there. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> No, those are good goals. And I think, honestly, I think the, like, the personal, the 
trying to create your own opportunity, trying to create your own show, I think that is like, I think that's going to happen a lot next year. I think people are going to like mm. be surprised at how much more commonplace that is. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think there's a lot of groups in various parts of the city, like trying to do more, do more um, shows and events like that yeah i think that like you see things you know i mean it's a big city so it's almost like there are these eras here i've been here for eight years so it's like i've seen lots of communities form and then i've seen them disband Mm -hmm. like multiple times actually um and then there are people who just they just stay in new york and so they just you know keep doing what they're doing or they you know create something new like or they'll do something else so it's kind of interesting to sort of see you know those those like expansions and then they like kind of you know it gets closed off again and then it like expands again and so um so you know it's you know it's interesting because in my program like that I went to you build a lot of different connections and like community with people but unfortunately a lot of people end up leaving really shortly after Mm -hmm. I think um I think it's usually when people already have like an establishment here that they're able to like kind of like keep going and doing things and you know some people like you know it's just New York it's like I've seen it in San Francisco like people Mm -hmm. don't always necessarily stay in a city that you know, they kind of move to because like, oh, the city, it's like mm, ends up not being necessarily yeah. what they expect, mm-hmm. you know? So I am curious to see like, as like certain things like maybe fade out, like some people like aren't doing, um, aren't bringing people together anymore. Like who's going to like step in and sort of be like, oh, I'm going to be like a catalyst to, um, create community and like showcase work. Um, cause it's, you know, Again, like, I, I think that it's kind of like the biggest draw of being here is sort of the potential, but like, what if, and like having so many different creative people around, it's like amazing. And then like, it can be so competitive too. Yeah, <laughs> so, it is competitive. Yeah, it's competitive, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it's competitive. I don't think New York is like the ultimate art city either. What is the ultimate art city? Then? I don't think there is an ultimate. I do think that there are other cities that where there are lots of good artists. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, I think because of, you know, the internet, like you see now, especially like there's artists all over. Whereas like before it was yeah. really like where are the galleries at, that's where the art's yeah. at. Like, and now it's like the galleries are all just like, just trying to sustain themselves. Yeah, they are. It is still, you know, oh gosh, it's so weird. <laughs> I would love to have my own gallery, but I would like, I like conceptualized it. I was like, I want to have my own space. Like, and I was like, how can I like have a space, turn it in, I want to turn it into a nonprofit. And then like, I want to be just like totally like either member based, but like, it's not hinging on, you know, who comes in and shows work or like utilizes the space doesn't, isn't contingent on whether or not they're going to like sell Mm -hmm. or like their work is like maybe like palatable or or easy to show like it's like installation or it's um you know really conceptual or or something you know it's just like it can be like a a place of like expression yeah yeah and i'm like but again you know like the efforts to create that space you know you say it's like oh i'll say yes to that but then i have to like probably say no to my own practice Mm -hmm. in order to like sustain stump sustain something like that let's make it happen let's do it together I'm tired. Like, I don't want to, I'm You're just like, saying, my like, dream. you know, and I'm like, like, it's just like, it, it's an idea. Like, at some point, maybe, you know, like, it's very, like, you know, I'm just saying, applying to things, uh, allowing the answers to come and go is pretty, it's pretty low stakes on my part, you know. But when, like, someone says yes, it's like, feels so good. It's amazing. I'm like, oh, yes, I have reason to, to not live, but like, to make art. <laughs> I have purpose next year. Yeah. Okay. I can't think of that. I can't think of a better way to end this on. Oh than yeah, that. than that. Yeah. Oh fuck. Perfect. Okay. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Steph. What do you have to promote? Tell it to the camera. I don't have anything to promote, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have nothing to promote. I just want to talk about being an artist and making art in new york check out steph's instagram and her website they'll all be linked in the description of the episode below um buy her work hit her up go to her studio um don't come to my studio (laughs) (laughs) all right thanks steph thanks dan